Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I just wanted to make a quick video uh, to update the prayer request I had about water. Um, been very busy this month. Uh, the last, the first two weeks after I did that prayer request, uh, the body of Christ came, th the Lord came through, but people praying and everything. Um, there's a little stream that's still trickling that's going down by the uh, cistern. And within a week, the cistern filled up to halfway. Um, and it's probably still filling up some more. Um, we've got weather reported for like 100 degree weather uh, coming up this next week. Um, but God controls the weather, not men. Um, but I just wanted to thank everybody for their prayers. The cistern has filled up to the point where I can still use water in the house again. Um, the tank, I'm still working on trying to get the pump. The whole situation for the new pump that I put under last year. And the tank in the backyard that's completely full. There's a lot of good water in there and um trying to get it to work for the house i'm still trying to get that situated it goes back to i think one of the videos i talked about in the past you have all these good skill sets trades you know plumber woodworker electrician stuff like that and around here it's a lot of uh, elderly people that are doing it i mean these people are you know i've had one guy that came and worked on my pillow stuff i said this before and it was like he was um, had one foot in the grave. He looked like he was 80-something and going on 90. Uh, we just don't have any young people to come through to take over these jobs and replace these guys that have learned to trade, and they work hard work with their hands. And so when I called him up to get a plumber to come out uh, to help look at that pump system in the tank, uh, I got put on a list. <laughs> so it's... Um, it's probably going to be a while before someone gets up here. Uh, I just keep pressuring them and everything, but um, just want to say thank you for the prayers. We do have water again, running water. We're still scrimping and saving as far as uh, putting water in buckets, wash our hands, the extra water we're using to water things outside in the garden. Um, you know, those things like when you got the shower going and you want hot water, so we put the head. I have one of these things that the head comes off. You put it in the bucket and you turn it on for a couple minutes to get it to warm up and then you put it up there and then you can take the warm shower, like a minute shower, <laughs> or quick showers. I have my daughter with me this month. Um, but uh, that's what I mean by we. But we're doing everything we can to save water and I think that's helped the tank fill up pretty good. And we're just like, so we're doing okay with water right now. Uh, when it's just me again, I know how to really scrimp and save. Um, I took my... Uh, minute shower this morning that's why my hair is a little weird uh, and out 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 um but uh i can scrimp and save and make it through august and we're supposed to get some rain back in september but like i said god's the one in charge of the weather not man uh, there's a lot of times out here the man will try to predict the weather and it doesn't it hardly ever goes the way they predict because they're not the ones in charge god is but I wanted to thank everybody for their prayers. Thank you. Thank you so much for your prayers. God answers prayers. He does. Um, and I'm still praying for everybody else, which brings me to the next part. Just to remind people to keep praying for the brethren. Keep, keep praying for the brethren when it comes to the flesh, their struggles and their war with the flesh, and uh, their spiritual battles, you know, to having to deal with this lost world. Uh, right now, what we got going on is got a lot of people that are really attacking the body of Christ today and they're supposed to be professing Christians and or they're professing to be Christians and they're not and they're really attacking the body of Christ really hard today and things are just I'm out in the mountainside um, I have people send me news clips and I start looking at some news and go oh that's what's going on out there so sometimes I'm not always up to date on everything that's going on out there so I've had some brethren send me some stuff about what's going on out there and uh what was it they're supposed to be the president's supposed to be given a, a speech next week or this coming week that's supposed to be very important something important going to come out so i mean i don't know i'm not scared the lord will take care of us brothers and sisters in christ and he'll take us home when the time comes um so trying to walk smooth but uh, i'm looking at what's going on in the world and Brothers and sisters Christ, we need to just keep praying for one another, and we need to keep encouraging one another with Scripture, prayer and Scripture. That's how you encourage the brethren. Uh, you point them to Jesus Christ. 
every day and remind them that every day we're supposed to pick up our, uh, deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and follow Him. Always pointing people to Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of Scripture, the King James Bible. One guy is like, what are you talking about, a, a paper Jesus? No, I'm talking about the King James Bible points you to the real Jesus Christ, the capital L Lord Jesus Christ. All the other Bible perversions point you to Satan posing as Jesus Christ. And when you have a lot of people that come on and they're just doing their feelings and opinions, feelings and opinions, and that's all they're doing, uh, it's not pointing them to Jesus Christ, just giving people your opinions and feelings. So just, I'm, I'm correcting myself and I'm correcting the body of Christ. I'm trying to lift us all up. Use scripture. Prayer, scripture. Point people to some old hymns. Okay, that have words that come from the King James Bible. You know, phrases and, and words oftentimes come from the King James Bible. I did that one song that I put out about um, think on these things. You know, trying to encourage the body of Christ that right now Satan is so desperate, he's really trying to distract the body of Christ. Okay, he's trying to get us to fight and nitpick over little things. And I'm going to be coming out with a study um, that I'm looking through it, and I, 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 had, I couldn't stop where I wanted to stop. I, God showed me some more and said, hey, you need to keep going. Because Paul's like, hey, I'm agreeing with you people, but you people, you're not right with the Lord either. I'm agreeing with you people on this part over here, but on this other part over here, don't be patting me on the back. I'm not agreeing with you <laughs> as a whole. Don't be patting me on the back, you know. It's one of those things where we got to keep checking ourselves, brothers and sisters in Christ, and that prayer, it's really important. Prayer is strong. Prayer is good. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Uh, right now when I'm walking on this road, there's times when I'm just me by myself. I'll talk with the Lord as I'm walking on this road. I keep saying this time and time again because I've had people attack me. Well, you've got to bow your head and close your eyes and you've got to take your hat off and everything when you pray and everything. And then that's real prayer. Prayer is anytime you are personally talking to God one-on-one. -on -one. That's prayer. That's what prayer is, your personal relationship talking with the Lord. You can talk to the Lord about anything. Right? And right now what we really need to be talking to the Lord about is starting with, A, with ourselves, our personal walks with the Lord. Lord, is there anything that I need to do? Um, anything left that I need to do? Uh, is there anything I need to get out of my life? Lord, keep cleaning my life up. Am I being used by you? Am I living a godly life? It's not just in word. There's so many Bible Bible-believing, uh, God-fearing men and women in word, but not in deed. They speak the life of Christ, but they're not living the life of Christ. So you need to be praying and talking with the Lord, comparing your life with Scripture, not feelings and opinions and people's feelings and opinions, and say, am I living a life of Christ? And what do I need to do? What do I need to change? There's always sanctification going, even in my life. Even in someone's life that's been saved for 20, 30 years, you can talk to them. They're truly saved. They're going to be like, yeah, there's still sanctification going on in my life. God still shows me new things all the time. Sometimes I, Satan, I'm deceived and Satan sneaks something into my house. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, God's like, something's wrong with that right there. And you go over to look at it and go, how did I not notice this? Thank you, Lord. And you get it out of your life. Right? Sanctification's going on all the time. But we need prayer starting with yourself. Pray to the Lord saying, Lord, open my eyes. Is there anything I need to do that I'm not doing? Is there anything I need to stop doing? And you know who you are out there. Those are things that I need to stop doing. Okay? Things I need to get out of my life. Okay? But uh, then the text prayer, brothers and sisters Christ, uh, the body of Christ as a whole I pray the same prayer for everybody else, that their walk with the Lord is as strong as mine, if not stronger than mine. My prayer is that people's walks with the Lord are stronger than mine. And it, it helps me say, well, then I, I want mine to be as strong as theirs. You know, it's just that whole prayer. I pray that, you know, for the struggles with the flesh with the brethren, because I struggle with the flesh. I pray for the struggles with the lost world and the ways of this world, because I know I struggle with it. I pray for the brethren on that. Um, right now, physical health. Uh, right now, that's still a big thing to start praying, to keep praying for some of the brethren when it comes to jobs. I mean, things are just here in America. Um, in Oregon, they passed the law about two weeks ago, I think it was, that now you have to have a mask in any confined space, buildings and stuff like that. 
and I just walk in and say I have a medical condition, there's nothing they can do. Okay. They ask you what that medical condition is, they violate the HIPAA guidelines. I don't have my wallet on me, but I have that piece of paper in there that talks about the HIPAA guidelines and you know the the fine for it is seventy five thousand to a hundred thousand um, dollars. They're not to ask. They're not allowed to ask you what your medical condition is. But the restaurants are opening up and they're not following it. In Oregon, they said you have to have a mask. They're like uh, people are eating. They're not going to be wearing masks and eating at the same time. So here they came out with another law. Well, here's the new law. You have to wear a mask into the restaurant set down then you can take your mask off but if you get up to go use the restroom you have to put the mask back on and then when you go to leave you have to put your mask on to leave and then you can sit there and eat and it's like you're touching the outside of the mask to take it off you're breathing the mask is down here getting stuff on the inside and the outside and you're sitting there talking it's so retarded americans have gotten so blind it, ignorant but blind they love their movies tv shows video games and their entertainment i've always said this in the past how do you distract people and keep them from doing the right thing and following truth you distract them with food and entertainment all right they've done it in the past and what was the entertainment in the past in rome they were killing christians and then they were giving the crowd free food entertainment soon to come it's soon to come brother and sister christ i can see it all right um but yeah it's just, it's getting bad out there, and people are losing their jobs. They say, I can't wear a mask for eight to nine hours a day. It's bad for you. It's unhealthy. Well, then you're fired. Well, then I'm fired. You know, there's people, we have brethren that are losing jobs. All right? um, they, definitely, they definitely need prayer from the body of Christ. Um, that might seem, for some of us, it might not seem, because we're not in the thick of things, it doesn't seem like much, but I'm realizing as I watch some of the videos on what's going on in the world, that there's some of you brothers and sisters in Christ that are in major cities, uh, populated area, that you're surrounded by wickedness left and right, and the vexation of this world, and it's hard on you guys. And my prayer goes out to you, and I'm praying for you, and we just need to keep praying for one another. My biggest thing is let's just get back to doing Bible studies, and that's what I'm trying to do, to do some Bible studies. So I just want to thank the brethren for their prayer about the water. The water's doing good right now. Praise the Lord. He, that first two weeks, I don't know if I said it. I might have cut myself off maybe, but um, we had mist on the ground. It just got very misty overnight, and then the water was ground was all wet. Now that in itself, it's not going to fill up a cistern just because there's dew on the ground. But what that does is that keeps the ground moisturized so the water that's in the ground doesn't evaporate as much um, or dry up as much. So it's when it gets to the 100 degree weather and it's dry all night, it's kind of hot all night. That's when those cisterns start drying up. The wells around here that are 60 feet, they start drying out and they, couldn't, they can't get water out of them. Uh, like I said, I have a neighbor that's gotten a 120 foot well and I got a guy up here, I'll show just the mountainside. He's up there, and I talked with him, and he had a well dug, and they had to go 185 feet to hit water, and he made him go the full 220 feet. But he paid close to 10 grand, and that didn't include the pump system or anything. So uh, for me, I'm probably looking at close to 15 grand if I want to do an actual well, dig a well. And I can't afford that, brothers and sisters of Christ. And a lot of you guys can't afford that either. And, uh, and like I said, it's just the Lord has blessed me. I've gotten it through every year. I don't know, if I have to do GI showers, praise the Lord. I catch the water that I can, but you have to have a place to store it. You can only catch so much. So during the winter, it rains a lot, but you can only catch so much. And um, I might have invested in another tank, another huge tank to put out where I can store a lot of the rainwater that's coming winter. Um, but uh, but that's not the side. I just want to say the Lord blessed me. It was so hot, and I did that prayer. Uh, request it was such a hot day and I'm sitting out there let's see if we can get the I I'm sitting out there and like Lord it's just so hot outside and the pump started stopped working on the well because it has the safety switch so I went down to the well it's really low and I did that prayer request and after I did that prayer request through the prayers of the, of the brethren and uh, my prayers the prayers of the brethren God answered our prayers and that next week to two weeks, every every evening the fog started rolling in, 
and we had fog up here on the hillside and every morning it was a wet ground and God helped us uh, be meticulous with our water and save our water because I, I think the biggest thing is I'm trying to do a garden when I first lived here I didn't do anything except you know study the Word of God um, still struggling with video games and movies kicking them out and then falling into them a little bit and this was almost five years ago um, but um, I didn't really do anything that took a lot of water but now that I'm trying to do some great things with my hands that glorify God uh, that lift up my Lord you know, the Think on These Things song that lift up my Lord. Um, I did a garden, and that, start takes, that takes water to do a garden. And um, got some plants inside. I uh, got some neighbors that gave me some plants that are supposed to do get really tall, because I've got vaulted ceilings. It's supposed to get really tall, and they have huge leaves. And I love those types of plants. So um, I was trying to do a couple of those inside. I'm not much of a plant guy other than gardening for vegetables. People keep trying to give me flowers and stuff to plant. You can plant these here. I'm like, I'm really not a flower person that much. So, um, so yeah, uh, God really did answer that prayer, and it was amazing. So keep praying for the brethren. Let's stay in our, the Word of God. Let's stay in prayer. Uh, keep studying the Bible. Keep living the Bible. Remember, the Bible, the King James Bible... God's perfect written word for English-speaking people is our final authority. I'm not your final authority. And I did that study, and I pray that a lot of you watched it, um, about should you trust your heart or the word of God. Because today I just get so many people that keep saying, I feel this, my opinion's this, or I was told this by somebody else, um, and whatnot. And it's like, what saith the scriptures? Someone comes to you with asking you for advice. My first thing that I would say to them is, what does God's word say? You know, why are you coming to me? I'm not the final authority. God's word is. If you say, hey, I found this verse or, and this verse, but it doesn't really answer my question. And I need, I, I don't know what to do with this situation. That's nothing wrong with that. But we got a lot of people, brethren, professing brethren, <laughs> and some brethren saved, that we can't get lazy, you know. Your first person you go to for answers is Jesus Christ through His perfect written word. And that's where you need to go through first. Okay? I'm not your final authority. Nobody else behind a camera on YouTube is your final authority. Jesus Christ and His perfect written word is your final authority. That's your foundation. You should listen to some of us, don't get me wrong, that are preaching the word. But you should always be following along to make sure it lines up. So, uh, let's walk and talk. It's going a little bit longer just than I wanted, but I just wanted to encourage the brethren. Stay in the Bible. Keep doing those Bible studies. Go back through some old Bible studies if you have to. Um, make those memory cards that I mentioned way back when. Uh, memory verses. Um, do a subject. Okay, I want to do a subject on eternal security. So get as many verses as you can that support eternal security in this dispensation the, from the death of Jesus Christ clear up to the catching away of the body of Christ, which is going to happen pretty soon. I can get a lot of people saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. And we did this on my last walk and talk, that it's not an escape. If you've messed up your life, you need to get your life right with the Lord. You need to get your heart right with the Lord. By hiding His Word in your heart. That's how you get His heart right. You hide His Word in your heart, and you obey it. You physically obey it. All right. But, but yeah, um, just... Keep you know, studying. Do the memory cards. Go for walks and read the memory cards and talk with the Lord about them. Uh, in these last days, you start getting tempted or you start getting stressed out. And it seems like you've got so many people against you. And it's going to get more and more. I had a brother in Christ tell me, I forgot how it, he said like 30 yards or something. You take a rug that's like a foot wide and it's 30 yards and you roll it out. I almost want to say 3,000 miles. We're out 3,000 miles, but, you know, he did kind of sample 30 yards, something like that. And he said you cut a small corner off that rug. Just a little, one little corner piece, you cut a little small corner part off. He said that's called a remnant. And he believes that's how many people are leaving the catching away at the body of Christ. Just a remnant. Will it be noticeable? I think the only thing that will make it noticeable, you know, is how God deals with the babies. Babies go with us. Some people believe that. I believe that. Um, that's going to be something that can't be hidden. But if the babies didn't go, and it was just Bible believers, 
there's a very few remnant going, it wouldn't be noticeable. Okay? They just claim it's a terrorist attack. Or they're putting on a show and they're all hiding off somewhere, you know, because there's so few of us left in these last days. Few of us that are standing. I'll throw that in real quick. The Bible says where to stand, stand, stand. A few of us that are standing. Uh, the people that aren't standing, they're still going to go, don't get me wrong, but there seems to be even fewer of us that are still standing. So, so many brethren that I looked at that I'm like, I still believe that person's saved, but they've given in to sin and temptation. They've given in. A, they've given in to temptation, and they've chosen to sin, and they've chosen to try to resurrect the old man. Their life's going to be miserable. It's going to be just horrible if they're truly saved. But they're falling away, trying to resurrect the old man. They're falling away because they're falling back into the ways of the world, and not the ways of the Lord. They're not denying themselves anymore. They're not picking up that cross anymore. And they've stopped following Jesus Christ. Right? Can a saved person do that? Absolutely. But your life is going to be a big mess. It's going to fall apart. You're going to be miserable. You're not going to have peace. You're not going to have joy. That's one of the big red flags. You see these professing Christians that, Oh, I'm happy and I have such joy and I'm so blessed and everything. And you look at their life and their life is just wicked. They've fallen away. And you look at them and you go, Wait a minute. If you were truly saved, you'd lose your peace and you'd lose your joy. I mean, it's just what the Bible teaches. If you turn from God and you turn from His ways, you're going to lose your peace and you're going to lose your joy. All right? So we need to stay in the Word of God, keep living the Word of God. That's my biggest push. Words have meaning. Next study that we'll be doing um, is going to be someone's trying to was talking with the brother in Christ, and it seems like he's trying to replace a word in the Bible with another word. And I started doing a study on it, and I started learning a lot more than just the main subject. So we'll hopefully do this a two-parter and go through and learn some great stuff in the Bible. Well, the second part will be a word study. Um, but words have meaning okay, when you're doing your Bible studies. Remember, there's three ways to study the Bible. Subject study, expository study, and word studies. Those are the three ones that I push a lot. And through those, doing those three things, it'll take you all over the Bible. Even if you do a word study, it definitely takes you all over the Bible. But even if you do an expository study, I'm just going to read this chapter. You can't help it. I've done it with the brethren. I do a Bible study with some of the brethren online. And we do an expository study. We're doing Peter, First Peter. We do expository studies. And we start reading, next thing you know, well, what about this verse way over here, and that verse over there, and you're just going all over the Bible, and it's just, it's amazing, I love fellowship with the brethren. Um, so stay in the Bible, right? So pray, make sure you're living a life of Christ, stay in your word in these last days and everything, and just keep praying that we get that last soul saved, and keep praying for the brethren in these hard times. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.